As neighborhoods change, a low-level war is brewing in communities across Southern California. It's a racial battle between black and Latino gang members. One community fed up with the violence is taking steps to end it. John Schwatter has our Fox 11 investigation. Racial conflict like this between blacks and Latinos is ripping through Southern California. From South L.A. to Compton, Pomona to Pasadena, communities have witnessed troubling shifts in population, especially with Latinos moving into traditionally African-American neighborhoods. I mean, they come over here and try to take over everything, you know. Any Mexican that come in our way, nigga, we gonna put them down. The Mexicans, um, that's how I feel. Um. But the racial conflict cuts both ways, including attacks by Latinos against blacks, spreading the grief all around. Her son, 18 year old Zelvin Reyes, some say he died a hero, killed in Highland Park defending a black friend who was being attacked by the Avenues, a Latino gang. That attack has produced no arrest. It came even after other members of the Avenues were jailed and charged with a string of hate crimes, including the murder of these two men in 1999 and 2000. All of this aimed at driving African Americans out of Highland Park. In L.A. County's most recent annual report, 62 hate crimes were reported against Latinos, 78% of the suspects there being black. And in 156 hate crimes against blacks, 73% of the suspects were Latino. But few Southern California leaders own up to the ugly facts of black on brown, brown on black violence stalking their streets. Eventually they're going to have to step up and say, we have a problem here and it's getting worse year after year. Pasadena stands out as one community facing up to this problem. People assaulting each other uh, over the color of their skin, uh, it, it is no longer really just a police problem. In fact, to, to frame it as a police problem is a mistake. It is now a community problem. The chief of police in Pasadena sees the disturbing trends and isn't afraid to talk about them. In Pasadena, we have had over 60 incidents since the first of the year. Have a seat, Raphael. His officers out on the streets dealing with it. They actually saw the, the two male black suspects approaching the lone Hispanic uh, victim. And just in time, they break up a suspected crime, arresting two blacks and finding a gun. But police don't always make it in time. This memorial in Pasadena marks where Chino Acevedo intervened, trying to stop two blacks from attacking an older Latino man. And when he came to the aid of the initial victim being harassed uh, by, by the group, uh, an altercation occurred and he was shot and killed. In September, Erica Hinman was with her boyfriend, Walter Villanueva, a gang member as he hassled a group of African-American teenagers. When police arrived, Villanueva was firing his gun, and cops fired back, accidentally killing Hinman only a few doors down from her home. She's gone. No one can bring her back. She's gone. To put a lid on such racially charged tragedies, Pasadena cops now redoubling their efforts to take Latino and black gang members off the streets. Pretty much a no tolerance approach. We stop anybody that's walking around, anybody that may look like a gang member. Pasadena also holding community forums to get people's fears and concerns out in the open. We've begun to break some of those barriers down. Some of those barriers are economic. Some of those barriers are cultural. At those meetings, blunt talk. The perception from the African-American community is that Latinos have come in and taken away their jobs and have taken away their homes, have taken away their neighborhoods. In fact, if you only look at numbers, Latinos have already replaced blacks as the dominant minority group in Pasadena. We're 46 percent Latino now, and where before it was a lot uh, less 
um, low 20 percent. And when you see those different changes occur, it's going to be a power struggle between the different groups that live in these neighborhoods. And the gangs make it worse. When the gangs come into play, then when you start to see guns being used and then the murders happen. So you're absolutely right. If the gangs weren't in place, we would see this conflict and this struggle happening with less violence. With interracial brawls like this at Jefferson High in South L.A., some are looking for school-based solutions. I think we're going to have to go into the schools as we've done and uh, identify leaders on the campus and uh, leaders in the field of brotherhood, take them off to training and reward those who promote interracial harmony, bring them back and, and spread that kind of a message. The new leaders would hopefully break stereotypes, perhaps follow the example of Zelvin Reyes, a Latino who stepped in to help a black friend. And if nothing is done, Pasadena's police chief says the alternatives are grim. We must, in Pasadena, find a solution to this issue, or we will tear ourselves apart.